What's up guys, this is Chad at All Dogs Off-Road and today we're gonna be doing a video on a M226 rear axle rebuild. The shop Xterra has a C200K in it, which is 3.13 gearing. We are gonna switch the Xterra over to this M226, which has 336 gears and it also has an e-locker. This is a factory option in the Pro 4X and the older uh, Xterra off-road trims and it's a bit beefier it's a bit stronger so it's going to be an overall upgrade for the Xterra both in functionality you know having the locker and then also in gearing I think ideally uh, with 33 inch tires which are currently on the Xterra uh, you'd want 354 or 3692 but we still want this to be highway drivable and we don't want to go too deep on gearing also, we have the uh, headers and a little bit more of a free-flowing exhaust on the Xterra along with intake manifold spacer to where 336 is probably going to be a, a decent ratio and still get good highway mileage. So the axle that we have here is going to be a, a full builder axle. Uh, we got this from Duncan Mills, a Nissan parts puller, and uh, he let us know right off the bat that it was going to be a builder. Uh, it needs new bearings and seals for the axles, and uh, we got a master rebuild kit. We're basically just gonna tear everything out and make it totally fresh and new. Um, he did put like a poor 15 kind of paint job on it. Maybe we'll scrape that off. It, it's kind of, it's a little too glossy, but um, by the time we're all done with this, it's going to be Functionally, it's going to be brand new as long as the axle uh, tubes or the axle shafts themselves aren't bent, which they don't appear to be. Let's get into it. So this axle has already been partially tore down. When it got here, I couldn't help myself, and so you guys are going to miss a little bit of the the tear down. But we've got the axle shaft. We got the well. We got the um, we got the brakes pulled off and the axle shafts have been removed. There's four bolts uh, and a retaining plate that's on the uh, shaft itself. Um, so those are out. Next thing we'll probably do is we'll take the carrier out and that should leave us the bare tube. And there's this axle has been sitting for a long time. So there's uh, a bit of rust and just grime that's kind of sitting at the bottom of the tubes. We'll take the pressure washer and we'll try and pressure wash all that out to get it nice and clean and not have any debris in there for when we get everything reassembled because you don't, you know, you don't want to uh, score or scratch your bearings and races with dirt and grime and that sort of thing. So axle shafts out, carrier is going to come out, we'll clean up the axle and then uh, we will start with the the axle bearings and seals and i've done a rebuild i've done plenty plenty of re-gears before so i'm i'm familiar with you know the carrier bearings and races and all that sort of thing i've never done uh <clears throat> axle bearings so you're gonna get to learn with me as we go through this We're going to use Timken bearings for this rebuild. So what we have here are going to be your set 10 axle bearings uh, for the rear axle shafts along with uh, Spicer uh, seals. These are uh, factory seals. Um, then we've got a mass rebuild kit here. It's uh, got Timken bearings and races. It's going to have a new pinion seal, uh, new ring gear bolts which we're probably not going to use because we're not planning on disassembling the ring gear, you know, removing it from the carrier. And then we have uh, a solid spacer uh, kit here, which is going to replace your crush sleeve. Uh, I prefer these to crush sleeves when I'm doing ring gears and working on axles. Or differentials, I mean. So before we're able to pull the carrier, we're actually going to have to disconnect the uh, wiring harness that runs to the electromagnet. So there's an eight millimeter bolt right here that I've already loosened and that's going to come out. And then this is got, this kind of is held in with an O-ring that's been sitting for however many years. So this is going to be a little bit of a pain to wiggle out, but once that comes out, there'll be a clip 
that we'll be able to, to remove and then the carrier will be ready to come out. Now, uh, at the back here, there is a, uh, what's essentially a, a pl plunger that's also a sensor. And this sits on the back of the electromagnet ring. And when you have your locker on, it pulls that plunger uh, toward the driver's side and that sends a signal to um, the PCM that the locker is engaged. Now, our Xterra is not a Pro 4X and it's uh, not expecting to see the signal. So we'll probably just remove this and plug it with a pipe plug or something because it, it won't be used. We're just gonna have a manual toggle switch wired in with a relay. Um, but also, when guys are uh, rebuilding these axles and say they're regearing or something, one thing, one mistake that they make is that they'll drop the carrier in without making sure that the plunger is, is pulled over to the side and so they'll drop the carrier directly on top of the plunger. And that can create an install uh, situation where the, the plunger is kind of wedged and kind of forces the locker open when it shouldn't be. So if you're ever doing a regear on an M226, uh, or this even applies to the 07 to 18 uh, JK Wranglers, you have to uh, make sure that your plunger is pulled to the side. You can do that with a screwdriver. Some guys will take some string and pull it over when they drop the carrier in, but it's just something that you wanna be mindful of uh, at time of reassembly. Quickly, we'll try and do a demonstration for you. We've already done this to uh, make sure that the locker itself is good because there are some uh, uh, quirks about these factory e-lockers. Um, there's a, a, a part of the electromagnet that when you engage it, it pops out and then a, there's a spring, a wave spring in the carrier which pushes it back uh, to unlock and sometimes the metal can deform on the, e the electromagnet and then the e-locker will stick. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that that wasn't a problem and it's not. But uh, so when you apply your, your 12 volts, I'll try and do this well not getting in the way of the camera, but there you go. Okay. So you've seen the actuation when we apply 12 volts. Uh, it, there's an electromagnet that, that forces uh, a collar over. When that collar snaps over, there's uh, some dog teeth which engage with the spider gears and that's your locking mechanism. So when the locker, when the 12 volts are applied, your dog teeth mesh, then your axle is locked and it rotates. And then when you remove the 12 volts, the wave spring and the carrier disengages the, the dog teeth and then you're back to a, an open uh, diff. No, good. So you'll see this is pretty grody and there's an O-ring seal that will make removing this difficult. But once you're able to remove it, uh, there's gonna be a pressure clip that you press here and then you'll be able to pull the uh, outer plastic off and then you'll be able to fish the rest of this through over here. Now with the heat cycles and uh, you know with time, this becomes pretty brittle, so you, won't, you want to be really careful not to break it, which may or may not happen here. We'll see. Yep. Figures. Okay. So now that this is free, you can push it in. So the bracket that the e-locker attaches to, the electromagnet, uh, that's an eight millimeter bolt. Uh, you're gonna have uh, two uh, retaining clips uh, on top of your uh, carrier caps those are also going to be eight mil so those will come out and then you'll need a 19 mil to actually physically remove the caps themselves the m226 um, has threaded adjusters on the side so it's not like a regular dana which would have carrier shims and that's really nice um, so you'll you'll loosen your threaded 
adjusters and then the carrier will come right out. So now that the caps are marked and they're uh, out, we will be able to unthread the adjusters and then the carrier will come right out. So just a minute ago, I said that this axle probably could have been uh, rerun if you just changed out your axle bearings, but that's not true. So uh, the pinion bearings here are definitely loose and she's uh, she definitely would have needed pinion bearings. So yeah, that's way, way too loose. So we're gonna be removing the yoke in the pinion nut here. The pinion nut is a 34 mil um, you'll get this off, then you may uh, need a, a puller to oink this off. Kyle's getting ready to spectate here. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. That was loose as Wow. Well, that, I mean, that makes that part of it a lot easier. got the uh, rear axle all torn down and we pressure washed it so it's sitting out in the sun waiting to dry. Uh, now we're going to start on the axle shafts and getting these bearings off and replaced. Uh, I'll be up front with you and tell you that I've never done this before so I don't have any pro tips yet. Um, you may see me struggle and do a hack job but it's my first time and you got to start somewhere. Um, this is relatively easy if you have the right tools. Uh, what's going to happen is you'll need um, uh, some circlip pliers. You'll pop your circlip off. And then there's a spacer here that you'll need to remove. And then what most guys do is they actually cut the, uh, uh, I guess what you call that, bearing cage off so they can get at the actual uh, inner race of the bearing and then they'll cut through that and they'll take a chisel and they'll hammer it and that should you know, give it relieve tension enough that you can slide the entire bearing down and then you'll be able to get to the seal and then the retaining plate. Um, that's gonna be the approach that we're gonna take and we'll see how that goes. So we tried giving a little bit of tapping and it seems like this has got a press fit to it just like the bearing does. So what we're probably gonna do is just cut through everything. So most guys will use a Dremel. Um, before we're gonna try the cutoff wheel before we go to a Dremel, see if we can squeeze this in there. You wanna be really careful that you don't nick your plate, you don't nick your uh, tone ring and don't nick your axle shaft. So um, just be very careful and wear PPE.
So you'll probably see on, this, on the video that actually startled me. Uh, as I got close to the very bottom, it relieved its own tension and it just popped itself open. So uh, that made things easy. I don't have to worry about uh, nicking the axle shaft, but now it should just come right off. So that's your, that's like a spacer ring. Um, and look, no damage to the uh, mounting flange there or race or whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's pretty cool. You can actually see like a fracture or a crack in there. Maybe Mike's fancy camera will grab it. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna uh, cut through the cage, get the cage off, and then we'll do the same thing to the inner race. Same situation here. I was able to cut pretty darn close to the bottom of the inner race and then I took a cold chisel and I hammered and uh, it ran a fracture all the way up through. So now I should be able to just drive the piece off. And the nice thing with doing this is you're not cutting all the way through. Um, you're just relying on that hardened steel to fracture with a good strike and then it makes for an easy removal so now we're at the the culprit this is what most commonly is failing on uh, Nissan Xterra's Frontiers and Titans is this inner seal right here and you know you guys strongly encourage that you change your diff breather to an aftermarket piece uh, so that you don't build pressure and then blow these seals out but uh, these seals are shared with uh, JK Wranglers, and it's just common for them. To, they just don't seem to have a long lifespan, you know, regardless of whether you do your diff breather maintenance. But um, basically, this is done. We're going to do the exact same thing for this guy over here. We'll clean these shafts up, and then we'll uh, put new seals, races, and all that on. So uh, reassembly is just going to be the complete opposite of disassembly. You're going to have your <clears throat> retainer, your seal, and then your bearing, spacer, and then your circlip. Um, if you get, these are spicer seals, uh, part, uh, this part number is not legible. I think it says 52765, but don't quote me on that. Maybe we'll put it in the description. Uh, these come pre-greased from the factory. If you buy aftermarket seals and they're not greased, uh, you'll want to make sure to get a good amount of grease on the inside of your uh, the seal lips here, um, because that's the grease along with the rubber is what you know creates your seal, so that your oil is not going to weep past and uh, get to your rear brake drums. <clears throat> now let's get her put back together. <laughs> Now let's get her put back together. <laughs> so we've got our bearings and seals pressed onto our axles all cleaned up. Uh, the final step is just to uh, reinstall our snap rings. And then these guys will be all finished.
So now that our uh, axles are all done, we're gonna start on the carrier and the pinion bearings. Um, we're going to take the races, the pinion races, and we're gonna put those in the freezer. That's gonna shrink them ever so slightly. It will make uh, getting them uh, into the diff a little bit easier. I've got a special uh, tool that's gonna allow me to uh, grab under these carrier bearings and pull them off, and then we're gonna replace those as well. Uh, one thing I mentioned we were going to do at the beginning of the video is this is your uh, crush sleeve. I'm going to replace this with a solid, oh man, that's grody, a, a solid spacer. Now the fun. So I'm doing a little bit of extra credit right now. Uh, if you're this far into your factory locked M226 or even uh, Dana 44 from a JK, uh, one thing that you ought to check is at the very uh, top here. So you'll see when I turn this upside down, this, this is the actuator for your electromagnet. So when you give it 12 volts, this pops out. Now. What can happen over time is that this outer flange up here can build a little lip and that can cause this actuator to stick and then your, um, your locker will, will not disengage. So when you're here, you can f take your fingernail and feel for, you know, if, you, if you're catching a ridge with your fingernail, just take a file and knock that down so that it's all smooth and that your fingernail's not catching, then reassemble. So while we're stripping down the carrier and we're uh, gonna put the new bearings on it, um, I've taken the uh, head and tail pinion bearings out of the mass rebuild kit. You're gonna take the races out and throw those in a freezer and cool them off for a little bit. So we got our pinion bearing races in the freezer. They'll probably gonna be in there for like an hour to cool down. Uh, I've got a, a bearing and seal driver. I'm going to drive this brand new bearing onto this grody old carrier. So we're on the opposite side of the carrier. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Get your uh, bearing in position, get your driver ready and drive it down. Now, if you're gonna use a, a, a solid spacer, uh, crush sleeve eliminator like we're going to use save this because you'll take your preliminary measurement off of it uh, it'll help you find your it'll get you close in preload um, and you'll see later on that that getting your preload correct with a solid spacer is a little bit of a trial and error uh, operation but we're going to take the head uh, pinion off of i'm sorry the head pinion bearing off of the pinion uh, and we'll press the new one on Uh, under your pinion head bearing, there's a little shim under here, and this is what sets your pinion depth. You don't want to uh, ruin this or lose it. So it was stuck to the top of my inner race. I just pried it and pushed it down so that I'll be able to grip on the race alone and keep the shim intact.
Now, we're not changing gear ratios or even changing ring pinions, so we're going to try and get away with just keeping our, uh, our pinion shim as is, throw everything back together, and we should get a good pattern. If you're doing a re-gear, this would be a little bit of a trial and error process, uh, trying to find your pinion depth. So basically, you would get everything together, throw it in the axle, take your pattern, and uh, from there, you would uh, make pinion depth adjustments as necessary. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we won't have to do that. So we've got our pinion shim in place. We've got our new head bearing, pinion head bearing. We're going to uh, go press it in the hydraulic press. So now that we got our pinion races driven in, we're getting to the point where we're ready to do our pinion setup. And what's important here is getting the correct amount of preload, which puts enough tension on your uh, head and tail bearings. It's like a little bit of a clamp. So you get a nice kind of light drag on your pinion when you rotate it, but it's not too stiff and not too free like it was when we first began the video. Now, we're not gonna use a crush sleeve because I don't like them. Um, Crush sleeves, if you ever have to go to service this pinion again, uh, if a person were to go and, you know, say, fix the pinion seal here, if you used an impact gun to drive the pinion nut down, it can crush the sleeve more, which then puts too much preload on the bearings and can wear out the diff over time. With a solid uh, spacer or crush sleeve eliminator, or whatever you want to call it, um, your height is solid and permanent. It's not going to deform with more or less torque. Uh, on the pinion nut. So um, we'll get our, we're going to take our measurement here with the micrometer. Um, and that's where we will start. This is kind of a trial and error process. So we'll start with the height measurement that we take here with the new bearings. It's probably going to feel a little, it'll either be too tight or too loose. And then we'll just have to uh, trial and error it until we get the right preload. But our measurement is 0 0.5620. So compared to your uh, crush sleeve, this is what a solid spacer looks like. It's just a solid ring on a Dana 44 uh, with uh, variable thickness uh, precision, precision ground shims. So you'll use this to set your height. So I'll get as close to the 0.5 620, I think that's what I just said. Um, we'll get as close to the measurement that we just took and see if that gets us where we need to be. With the solid spacer right now, we're too thick in our uh, uh, spacer because we got too little preload right now. That's way too light. So we will take this apart, remove the thinnest shim and see if that gets us where we need to be. So right here, we're at 0.5635. We'll see what that does. So you wanna feel a slight drag. Um, I typically don't take an inch pound measurement I just kind of do it by feel, and that feels good. So that may be our winner, winner chicken dinner right there. Also, I don't think that to get this a little bit, it'd be nice if it were just a hair lighter. Um, but to get it there, I don't think that the shim stacks that we have will allow for that. I'd have to either buy some more and uh, kind of dial things in a little bit. I almost need like a 0 .005 shim. and. I think 0.009 is the smallest in that set. So I'd say this is about as good as we're gonna get and I'm happy with it. Um, from here, what we'll do is we'll actually drop the 
carrier in and see if we can get a get a pattern. Yeah, that actually, as you spin it a little bit, it starts feeling even better and better. So I'd say we're there. So now that we've done all the work and getting everything set up and we got our uh, backlash where we want to preload feels good. This is uh, where you will take your pattern and see if all that work is actually correct or whether you need to make adjustments. So you take your, your gear pattern paint, it's usually oil, sometimes it can be blue, but you'll mm -hmm. apply it to a small set of uh, teeth. I usually do like three or four get a good pattern in there. And then after you get your teeth painted, what you're gonna do is you're going to apply some drag to the ring gear and rotate it. And then it's gonna print a pattern for you. It's gonna tell you whether um, your pinion depth is good or bad and whether you need to go deeper or shallower. Our friends actually sent us a really beefy rough stuff cover, so we're gonna throw that on. We've prepped our surfaces and uh, we've put Permatex Right Stuff down as our gasket maker. I really prefer Permatex Right Stuff for this sort of thing. And we're gonna set it on and bolt her down. So we're about to finish up our uh, gear setup here. We got our cover on, everything is done. The last thing to do, throw your oil slinger on, put your yoke back on, clean it up, give it some red Loctite, and then run your new uh, axle nut down. And then that's all she wrote. So that is uh, basically fully rebuilding uh, M226. We did our axle seals, we did our pinion and carrier bearings. We will probably later on, we'll throw the axles in and um, eventually put it in the Xterra. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and check out our website.